warning. This episode contains strong language. Uh, Dana is working against Trump, I would assume, right? There's no other way. Working against nope. Trump to get Biden elected. Nope. No. Nope. Who, who was nope. she working against on election day? She is illegally conducting elections. That's all I'll say. For who? I don't know who she's working with and for. I don't know. But she's but you, the boss. But you think she is working for somebody? I don't know. Well, you just said. She, I, I don't think, know. I don't know be, who she's working for. So you're so, so be, that's making. Huh? She could be um, leading by the election fraud herself. I don't know. Just by herself. Okay, you don't know. Well, she has a staff. They all yeah. obstruct poll watchers. You don't think these wild allegations are like, you're a lawyer, right? You, shouldn't you have evidence? It, it, I do. A, I can I understand do. how me, like, you know, beer drinking, blah, 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 with my friends throwing around armchair and stuff. But you're a lawyer, like, and you ran for house. And you just throw around these allegations, just nonsensical, with no proof for anything. If I didn't have evidence, I wouldn't be saying it. You just it. said I you don't it. have evidence. You just said I you don't have, have any evidence that who she's working for. You just said that. You don't know if she's working for anybody. She could I be working evidence. for you just throw, you just I have evidence. I have evidence that she's breaking the law. Correct, I have but you evidence. said she's working would, for somebody. I am. A, I didn't say that. You You're did. putting you words said, in my mouth. I don't it's know. She's it's recorded. So the po- you'll hear the podcast. You said... This is exactly your words. You said, Bye. I don't know who she's Bye. working for. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and uh, folks, there you go. Uh, when you push back on someone. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. All right, Whew. let me just take a deep breath. Um, we have a very intense episode today, okay? Uh, we had a, a Lone Star Play Podcast first, uh, and for me, a podcast first, period. Um, so I've done other podcasts besides this one. So this is the first time I ever had a guest um, end the interview early. Just, you know, get upset and end the, the interview early. So that's what happened. Um, so my guest is Jennifer Fleck. And um, I spoke to her. If you Google her, you'll, you'll find out about her. She ran for the House of Representatives here in Texas in July. Um, ran a race. Didn't win. Claimed there was voter fraud. Um, widespread then the election happened on Tuesday and she again claimed voter fraud Um, she actually got arrested at the center um, by disobeying police and they arrested her for trespassing they'd asked her to leave and she wouldn't she broke the law also when she took pictures and videos inside of there where you're not supposed to have electronic devices so you know she took these steps so anyway i had her on let her speak um, you'll hear in the podcast that i gave her every opportunity i let her speak completely uninterrupted actually for the first 10 minutes or longer um so i let her get her piece out and everything she wanted to say she just didn't want to let me get my piece out so um she said she was wanted to come on the news and you know spread this word and blah 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 and i guess what she wasn't expecting is someone to push back a little bit um, which is what we do on the podcast right again like i told her we, we don't do interviews on here we have conversations so i'm just having a conversation with her and you know what happens you have a conversation with somebody it's not going the way they expect they get upset and they just walk away from you right they just don't like it that's what happened um so you know y'all can decide maybe was i too mean to her was i too aggressive y'all tell me let me know in the comments or send me an email patrick at texas real food um i feel i was very fair felt like i gave her every opportunity and um you know i'm a nice guy <laughs> look uh, we have all kinds of people on this podcast all kinds of beliefs all kinds of everything we have all kinds of discussions we don't always agree but we never just end the podcast in anger and and you know it seems crazy to me but you know that that's her choice um so here what we got of it uh we actually got a good chunk of it so um you know it's still a good podcast to listen to but it is interesting to hear people say things without any evidence 
uh, and just throw around accusations. And it's just something I wanted to be careful with on the podcast. So um, that was my pushback with her. She just didn't like that. Um, again, I'm always going to stick up for y'all that are listening to this podcast. I'm going to try to provide you, the listener, with the best that I can. Okay? Um, so, you know, tried my best. Anyway, listen to the episode. Jennifer Fleck, if you want to Google her and find out more information before you listen to the podcast, feel free. She kind of goes over everything that happened, uh, her point of view anyway. Uh, don't forget, if you want to learn more information about the podcast, go to thelonestarplate.com and find all the information you would like. So, all right, Jennifer Fleck, half an interview. Uh, <laughs> enjoy. Hello, how we doing? Hi, good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Fun. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good. I uh, hope you're having a good morning. It was a crazy weekend, so I hope the uh, week is starting okay for you. We'll see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, last night, the um, Supreme Court denied the writ of mandamus filed, so I don't know if that's a good start. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, let's jump in. Let's just get right into this. Um, I had seen you in the news um, on, I think it was Cave View, I believe. Um, and basically, you're basically saying that you had witnessed voter fraud um, recently. This was on Election Day and you'd gotten arrested and you had videos and photos. You, you presented those. And I guess it stems back to your house race that you had back in uh, July. So, just yeah, just want to you know deep dive further into this and and see if we just can't have a a conversation. You know, this podcast is not. I don't do interviews. Okay, I only I have conversations with people. So that, that's that's all we're gonna beginning? do. Can I start okay. at the beginning? Yeah, of course. You you, awesome. you start. Okay. So as most people or a lot of people know, I ran for state rep in House District Forty Seven, which is in Western Travis County. Um, I led in the primary and in March and the runoff was in July. I was expected to be the winner by pretty much everyone, including myself. And the results came in statistically irregular, I would say. Um, at the early vote, mail-in votes came in at like 8.30 on election night in July. And he and my opponent was he ahead 55-45. And I thought, well, that's OK. I'm disappointed and unexpected, but all right, like, let's see what Election Day is. And then the first half of the polling places in Travis County came in at about 930, 55, 45, like not even a half a percent difference in the results. And I'm like, OK, that's a little odd and maybe not statistically possible. <laughs> And then at 1.30 in the morning, um, the remaining 50% of the polling places came in, 55-45. And I have an accounting degree, I'm an attorney, and that just seemed odd and improbable. And so I contacted a lady named Laura Presley. I happened to have her number. She and I were not friends, but I knew that she worked on elections, especially focusing on Travis County, because um, she alleges that she was... Uh, cheated in 2014 when she ran against Greg Kassar. And so she works on election integrity in Texas and Travis County. So I contacted her at 2 a.m. on election night. And I said, Laura, I think something's wrong with my election. And she said, OK, well, let's get started. And she had the audit logs for the entire election. The great thing about the runoff was that it was such a small election in comparison to a general that the glaring irregularities were so much easier to see if that makes sense and so and then we interviewed all the witnesses that were there and sure enough um the poll watchers were obstructed um there were there's evidence on the audit logs that ballots were deleted on election night the reason that they didn't post the final tally until 1 30 in the morning was because at about 11 p.m the audit logs show that they deleted all of our ballots for election day recreated new memory sticks, which is like a flash drive that holds our ballots, and then re-entered all the results for a 1.30 a.m. tally. So 
there's just too many things that don't make sense, that don't add up, that are very irregular. And so we filed an election contest, but we also filed election complaints with the Secretary of State, the Texas Secretary of State, right? Because obstruction of poll watchers is a class A misdemeanor and you can go to jail for obstructing poll watchers. So um, the Secretary of State referred a criminal investigation against the Travis County clerk on September 2nd, I think, or 6th, somewhere right in there. I have the letter and nothing was ever done about it. Like we were making everything public, trying to create pressure, making phone calls to the Texas AG. And he just let it die on the vine. I don't know if he's so embroiled with his own problems, right? I don't know if it's because he doesn't have the budget. I don't know if it does, it's because he doesn't have the time. I don't know. All I know is nothing happened. And so I was pretty sure that she was going to pull the same shenanigans in November. And um, my focus of all of my efforts turned into, can we save November, right? Because my election was lost. Um, it got dismissed on mootness, which if anybody knows what mootness is, it's essentially, even if all of what you're saying is true, there's not time to give you another election before November. So essentially the courts dismissed it on mootness. So anyway, I just wanted to really focus on November. I was concerned about the election based on what I knew. And so we heard early on. So Early votes are turned into central count. So if people don't know what central count is, it's the county clerk's office gathers all of our votes in one building and puts them on these tabulation machines that then um, reports the tally for the whole county. Okay, that's where all the that's where a lot of this is happening. So they in November they got all the early votes on Friday night and on Saturday. Again, she was obstructing poll watchers. So she Who's had, she? I'm sorry. You, she you said Dana, she, Debevoir. Uh, Dana Debevoir is the Tra Travis County clerk. She's yeah. been the Travis County clerk since 1987. She, she administers her own elections. When she's on the ballot, she administers, she's conducting the election, even when she's on the ballot, which makes no sense to me. It seems like there's a conflict of interest there. Anyway, so we heard that, okay, so the way she has this room set up, it's new this year because, of course, they're using COVID as cover for corruption, in my opinion, and she set up the room so that um, all the election activity, the tabulation of our votes, is in about a 15 by 20 foot deep room. The poll watchers are put on the other side of the wall with a window so that we can see through but not hear what's going on. That's not the law. The law is poll watchers are supposed to be able to stand or sit conveniently near the activity so that you can ask questions, point out irregularities, um, witness reports that are being signed, right? There's no way we can do any of those things where, where she has us. So I knew that was happening on Saturday. So late last minute, the Travis County Republican Party appointed me as a poll watcher at Central Count on Monday and Tuesday. I had been asking for months and they kept telling me no. I don't know why they finally said yes, but I was happy to do it. So I knew going in that it was gonna be a problem. So I went in Monday morning, um, prepared to call the police. That, that really was my plan. I was going to call the police if she was breaking the law. And sure enough, she had us outside that wall. Um, she would not change the room. They had nine people in that 15 by 20 foot room. COVID, like, is that not dangerous? And yet we were kept outside. She wouldn't rotate us in. We couldn't hear for several hours. At some point we got a speaker, but if more than one person was talking in the room, we couldn't hear what was going on. So I called 911 at about 11-ish mm -mm, and the sheriff showed up an hour later and I explained the law to him. I explained what was happening. I asked him, I said, can you see what they're doing in the back of that room? Because we can't see. And he's like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. He was very um, unprepared, I would say, for enforcement provisions in the law. 
So they took him aside. They basically, uh, in private, by the time he came back, he said to me and the other poll watchers, including Democrat poll watchers that were also not happy with the situation and complaining. I just was complaining the loudest. And um, he said, Miss, I'm sorry, I can't do anything to help you. You can file a complaint with the Secretary of State. That wasn't a real time solution. Like she was in the midst of stealing the election. I know it that because she did it in July. And so I was like, we've already done that. And a criminal investigation has already been referred and nothing's happening. And this is happening right now. So at that, in that moment, they found out that I was taking pictures and texting from that room, which you're not supposed to do. Um, but I was tired of the narrative that voter fraud and election fraud wasn't happening. And I was willing, to, I wanted to get those pictures out and have those pictures so that voters could see what was happening. So when they found that out, they lost their minds <laughs> and um, they quickly accused me, you know, they wanted to, me to leave. They asked me to leave and I said, I'm not going to leave. Um, this whole thing took about another hour. And finally, the officer said, um, you either need to leave or I'm going to arrest you. And I said, I'm not leaving. And so he arrested me. I was in jail for 24 hours. It was not pleasant. Anybody like I think we've watched I've watched too many movies. <laughs> where um, if you're not a hardcore real criminal, you get special treatment, you don't. So um, anyway, but the, some good things have happened since then. Um, uh, the AG's office took my statement on Friday morning. So it appears that maybe um, they're gonna do an investigation and actually do something about our elections in Travis County, because if they don't, she's just gonna keep stealing the election again and again and again, because there's no consequence for what she's doing. And, um, and then the Travis County Republican Party filed a writ of mandamus with the Supreme Court on Friday, asking them to make her let us in because she's still obstructing poll watchers as of Friday. And they denied the writ last night. So I don't really blame the Supreme Court. I'm guessing the Supreme Court wants the AG to do his job and to prosecute the crime like at the trial level and work its way up to the Supreme Court rather than just trying to go to the Supreme Court directly, my guess. So anyway, I just keep, I'm just gonna keep telling every media outlet and anybody that'll listen that we're getting cheated in Travis County. And, and I've been saying this since July, I've been saying if what's going on in Travis County is happening nationwide, we're in trouble and the American people are gonna know that they got cheated. And that's exactly what's happening. We all know when you have a lack of transparency, there's no trustworthiness. We can't trust the election results if they're always trying to hide and they're blocking poll watchers all over the country. Why? If you don't have anything to hide, there should be no reason to, 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 to block us out. So that's what's happening. And my goal is just fair and legal elections. I think um, if anybody's from Austin or knows Austin well enough, they know that there is it, there seems to be an agenda that is um, taking over our city in, in a very negative way. Um, the increase in homelessness and camping, the um, defunding of the police. It seems like there's activists in Austin that have um, that are driving policy that aren't elected, but they're driving policy. And um, I believe that they're grooming um, Greg Kassar to be the next mayor of Austin. And I just think they're going to they're willing to burn our city down if, if we don't stop it. And the, and the best, the first thing we have to do is get legal and fair elections. And Dana Debois has to be removed, has to be removed. So okay. that's what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Well, is it cool if we just start? I, I just wanted to, you know, your own words. I wanted you to be able to speak your mind and, and say what you wanted to say. Um, so I'm just going to push back on a few things, if that's OK. Um, let, let's start at the beginning, back, back in July there. Um, so I guess I just have a few questions. I'm curious more than anything. Um, OK, so you're, you're saying that there's fraud. Let's just talk about July. 
Sure. So you're saying someone is purposely going out of the way to make sure you lose. Like there's a conspiracy against you specifically to make sure you lose. No, there's a conspiracy to advance the more socialist candidate in every race. They are doing this not just to Republicans, but to Democrat candidates also. They are defeating moderate Democrats. So who, who is it? You say they. Who? Um. All I know is Dana Debevoise is, a, is the Travis County clerk. She is in charge of her staff. She is an operative. Is she, is someone telling her what to do? Maybe. Is she the driver? Maybe. I don't know. All I know is she is an operative in fraudulently conducting our elections. She's an operative. Okay. So you, so I mean, you don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You don't know. That, that's what I'm saying. You don't know. So, but you're saying it anyway. So that, I'm just being I know clear. That, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just being I clear. I just want to make sure we say the facts right here. You know, please. she's in. She's in charge. She's, she's in, in charge. charge. But but you have zero proof, right? That she has specifically gone out of her way to do it. You just assume. You're you're assuming, right? Well, I met her Monday for the first time face to face, and she yeah. told me that I was acting violently when I was knocking on the window. Um, to ask a question. So, so what does that, that have to do with the, the fraudulent back in July? Let's just stick with July here. So you're saying she that's what I'm that's what I'm just trying to get to the facts here of where this comes from, of why you would think that. Now, I get it. You, you lost the race and you just it didn't sit happy with you. So you thought there was something wrong. Now, I'm curious, the other guy you ran against, Justin Barry, he's a police officer, right? Mm -hmm. And you support the police? Sure. sure. They were okay. never going to let him win. They were okay. never going to let him win in November. Interesting. So you say they again. Who, who is they? Whoever's working with Dana Debevoise. Interesting. So you think there is some massive conspiracy coming all the way down, but not on the Republican side. They're doing everything per right. There's none of that. No, 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 no. I don't I don't know who's involved with Dana Debevoise. I would not be surprised if the Republican establishment is working in concert with her, but I don't have any evidence of that. Interesting. So they're working in concert with her to get rid of Republicans. I don't know who she's working with. No, there she is fraudulently advancing the more socialist candidate in every race to the how do you know that? Of moderate Democrats. But well, but how you, do you know that? Well, if you look at July, because July is a good little because it's so small. If you look at July, the more socialist candidate one in every democrat race yeah so you don't every think people just democrat. voted for them no you don't think I don't. that's possible i don't so you, you think that's completely impossible but what's more possible what sounds more plausible to you is a tiered conspiracy coming down from the top that seems more plausible to you than people just actually voting i don't if you don't have transparency there's too many irregularities that we don't know about She's illegally, she broke 20 different Texas election laws, 20. So when you're breaking the law, why are you breaking the law? Why? You broke the law. So why was it okay for you to break the law? You got because arrested. That, because and in people fact, you called Dana, in fact, you called Dana a criminal. I watched one of your Facebook live. You called her a criminal, but the truth is you're the criminal. You got arrested. Right? Whistleblowers are criminals. Every whistleblower is a criminal because they have to go so in you there. Admit, and they you admit you are a criminal and she is not actually a convicted criminal. She's not convicted yet. That's what I'm saying. So they're just allegations, right? You're, you're making statements about her when, in fact, you're actually the one that went obstructed justice, obstructed police. No, I don't. No, 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 no. I obstructed the police officer. No, you got arrested. Did you did. Criminal, criminal trespass, trespass, right? trespass, okay, trespass is when and you. The police officer away. asked you to leave multiple yes. times and you refused. So you basically refused an officer's orders. But at yes. the same time, you support police. Of course, I support police. But you disregard their orders when they talk to uh, tell you to do something. I wasn't so willing how, to so leave on my own volition. So when do you support the police? I always support the police. I was Except willing. when they're asking you to to I leave still the support place, right? them. I still support them. That's not supporting them, in my opinion. They're asking you to follow an order and you disobey their order because in your mind, something was going on and you wanted to go outside of the normal steps of the law to make something be seen in your mind. 
So what it if everyone took my, that? It wasn't in my mind. A criminal investigation has been referred by the Texas Secretary of State to the Attorney General against the Dana Debevoise, the Travis County clerk. That's not in my mind. That's a that's a document that I have. Yeah. So the, again, they're not stating there is uh, criminality. They're stating there will look into it. So there's a big there's enough. There's enough evidence to refer it for a criminal investigation. Correct. It's so why not wait for that? Why not wait for that to take its course? You just want to jump the gun and get she, in and do because she keeps stealing elections again and again and again. Two years from now, who knows? We're, the city's going to burn down if she keeps getting condu to conduct elections. The city's going to burn down in two years if she continues to conduct elections you, illegally. You the city, illegally. You think the city will physically burn down? I'm watching. In two years. I'm watching. Because I've been I've, I'm a, I've been a resident. I've, I've had a home here since 05. Anybody who lives in Austin will I live agree. In Austin. I'm here. Everybody in who lives in Austin will agree that I'm this city is taking a downturn. No, that's not. You say everybody. You're speaking for people. That's not fair. To be honest, let's be genuine. Here. Well, then why do we have disingenuous? What's the just, big recall Adler speak effort? For your, speak for yourself or the people you know, but don't speak for me because you just said everybody. And that's me. And I do not believe that. So please don't speak for me. I think there are a lot of people. There you if go. You look at, if you look at the recall Adler efforts, the city council recall efforts, it's clear that a lot of people are not happy with the the trajectory of the city of Austin. And a lot of people are happy with it. So I, I guess we're I, I guess we're like the country, right? Se 74 million people voting for Biden versus 70 million voting for Trump. That's a divided country. That's 50 50 to me. So I, I don't think it's one way or the other. You know, and especially in Austin. I mean, Austin's a liberal city. Let's be real here. I grew up in Dallas, for instance, uh, in Fort Worth, which is Dallas too. is more liberal, but Fort Worth is not. You know, that's way more. I grew up in Fort Worth. Republican. Yeah, absolutely. I did too. I went to school there. So I'm a yeah. Texan all the way. OK, but I believe in the rule of law as well. And I really just dislike when people want to break the law to prove the law. That doesn't make sense to me. And you're a lawyer. And you said you would do it all over again. That's scary to me. That's scary that people are going to go in with cameras. With, no, I know the law. I know the law better than everybody. I know what's going on. Let me shed the light. Oh, this police officer is talking to me. I'm going to ignore him. I support the police, but not when he's talking to me because I know what's going on. Don't, you don't think that sounds very like, you know, re rebellious? Like uh, it, it sounds reckless. Rebellious. You don't think that's reckless? No. Interesting. I think it's necessary. So you're necessary to disobey the police it's interesting but you support the police i'm it's confused necess it's necessary to expose illegal activity that's happening at the county clerk's office in travis county don't you think you should do it the legal way i tried so I tried. so you're saying it's okay to commit illegal acts as long as it's exposing other illegal acts yeah <laughs> that makes zero sense just fyi that's okay we can disagree yeah, absolutely. We do disagree on a lot of this. Uh, OK, so 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 let me ask you this. OK, so you think there's some massive conspiracy coming down to, to keep, you know, keep you out of office. And like you said, I mean, no, push, I mean, push socialistic, uh, you know, whatever candidates, candidates, candidates. So, socialistic candidates. Uh, OK, so we'll, we'll put that aside, that that conspiracy. All right. So the next conspiracy you think happened on actual election day that. Uh, Dana is working against Trump, I would assume. Right. There's no other way. Working against nope. Trump to get Biden elected. Nope. No, no. Nope. Who, who was nope. she working against on Election Day? She is illegally conducting elections. That's all I'll say. For who? I don't know who she's working with and for. I don't know. But she's but you, the boss. But you think she is working for somebody? I don't know. Okay. Well, you just said, she, I, I don't, think, know, I don't know who be, she's working for. So, you she assume, so be, that's making right? she could be um, leading by the election fraud herself. I don't know. Just by herself. OK, you don't know. Well, she has a staff. They all yeah. obstruct poll watchers. You don't think these wild allegations are like you're a lawyer, right? You, shouldn't you have evidence? I, I, do. I can I understand do. how me like, you know, beer drinking, blah, 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 with my friends throwing around armchair and stuff. But you're a lawyer like and you ran for a house 
And you just throw around these allegations, just nonsensical with no if proof or anything. If I didn't have evidence, I wouldn't be saying it. You just it. said you don't it. have evidence. You just said I you don't have, have any evidence that who she's working for. You just said that. You don't know if she's working for anybody. She could I be working evidence. for anybody. I said have that. evidence that she's breaking the law. Correct. I have but you evidence. said she's working would, for somebody. I am. A, I didn't say that. You You're did. putting you words said, in my mouth. I don't it's recorded. know. It's recorded. So the pop, you'll hear the podcast. You said, this is exactly your words. You said, bye, I don't know who bye. she's working for. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and uh, folks, there you go. Uh, when you push back on someone in their beliefs, they, her words, right? she couldn't take the conversation so she ended the interview that's the first interview i've ever had ended um look i wasn't trying to be aggressive or uh you know push against her um but i was trying to challenge her ideas uh, i think it's important to not you know throw around these fraud allegations left and right without any evidence right these are people's lives She's talking about this woman, Dana. Look, I don't know this woman, Dana. I'm not sticking up for her because I think she's a wonderful person. I don't know her. But what I do know is I don't believe it's fair for her to be accused of these things without any evidence. So, Dana, I'm sorry that this woman is saying these things about you. I haven't seen any evidence. She provided zero. OK, she's also accusing you of working for I don't know who I put a stop to it, as you can see. So. Uh, we don't stand for that stuff on the Lone Star Plate podcast. And and everyone that listens to this podcast over 100 episodes in knows that we have people from all kinds of points of view, which I'm so glad we do that so that this person, for instance, can't say, oh, that I'm biased and this and that. I'm not. We have, in fact, we have more conservative voices than liberal. So, you know, I stand behind the episodes we do. I stand behind the conversations I have. And I stand behind this conversation. I feel it's my duty as you're a listener, if you're listening in, that, you know, I push back on some of these things if I can, uh, especially misinformation. And this is the biggest misinformation plan uh, going out right now. So, you know, I'm also going to talk about a few things. Jennifer left, but that's fine. We're going to continue to talk about voter fraud a little bit, just you and I. So, you know, the reason I want to have her on is because of this. This woman is out online saying these, screaming these things, supports the police, but doesn't mind disobeying them and getting arrested. <coughs> right. You can't have it both ways. You, you, you just can't. And you can't be screaming at Black Lives Matter why they get to break the law. Oh, that's a it's nonsense. So I'm tired of hearing it and I'm tired of, you know, this nonsense. And, you know, we're not going to spend the next four years touting misinformation. It's just not going to happen. So there's voter, you know, supposed voter fraud in the Tuesday election. Again, this is what people like her are doing, spreading misinformation. Just throw out the allegation. No, you know, no accountability. Just say, well, I don't know who they're working for. And then say, I didn't say that. <laughs> and she'll hear it. It's recorded. That's her words. So, you know, for people to scream about, you know, this national voter fraud without zero evidence, um, I, look, if you think there's something wrong, great. Go through the steps uh, that we have in place, right? The court system, trust the system and go that way. When you start taking the law into your own hands, I mean, this is exactly what the Republicans fight against. <laughs> and here she is saying that that's what is OK to do. Makes zero sense. So, again, if you think that there's fraud or whatever going on, OK, go go about the right steps of you know, reporting it uh, to the proper authorities, you know, don't get all whatever, you know, Kojak on us and hit the streets looking for clues. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not Carlito's way. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's especially when you're when the Republicans and the right side is telling right the left not to do that and support the police and blah, blah, blah. And then Again, it just makes no sense. So, look, I'm all about fairness. I'm all about trust. I'm all about, you know, reality. I'm all about truth. So if there is things happening, absolutely, I want to know about it. But her doing it, that, that's not how we found out about it. No one else is saying anything. Right. Where's all the other poll watchers like saying something? They're not because it's not to what she said. In fact, Jennifer is 
you know, from what I could tell, works with the Texas GOP. It's like a lot of this stuff was planned to just say it's like people can't accept the, the, the results they get. Right. You lost. Just accept it. Move on. So so this was a fraudulent election. Was President Trump's election fraudulent in 2016? Oh, conveniently, that's not that one wasn't or any of the other Republican races. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's an inconsistent message. And I can tell she just wanted airtime to spout this. And that's what the Trump team and campaign is trying right now to hit as many media outlets and spread this message of misinformation. And the Lone Star Plate podcast was not going to let it happen. OK, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, whatever your political affiliation is, just trust that I will always push for truth on here. Okay. I, I don't, I will have every kind of viewpoint on here. No problem. But when someone like that comes on and just wants to spout that it's not going to happen and vice versa. If she was a Democrat saying other things that I don't believe are true, it's just not going to happen. And I was, I wanted to continue having the conversation with her. She left the conversation. Now, granted, was I pushing back? Absolutely. I mean, she's saying something that's just patently um, incorrect. And in fact, she said something not true right in front of me and, and said, she didn't say it. So, you know, anyway, she pulled off of the conversation. That's on her. She can't stand the heat, as we say, right? Get out of the kitchen. No problem, ma'am. Um, so wish you the best. Hope you come to understand that this is not the way to go about getting information, spreading information. And if you have a problem, go through the proper channels. Okay? Don't become a vigilante and, and take the law into your own hands. And I say that for every side. See, I'm consistent. So it applies to her as well. So look, if you have any questions about voter fraud or, you know, concerns or whatever, you know, send them in. Patrick at Texas Real Food. You want to come on the podcast and talk about the election or something? Patrick at Texas Real Food. Hit me up. Let's talk. You want to debate me? Want to go after some? I mean, I'll have a debate. Let's do it. Hit me up. Patrick at Texas Real Food. I'll talk to you. No problem at all. Um, all right. So one last thing I wanted to say that I thought was interesting. Donald Trump's team is, again, this is completely bipartisan, okay? This does not matter. But Donald Trump's team is sending out messages to get money for the defense fund. Okay, I get it. You have a problem with the election. You, you want to see things recounted. No problem. Uh, if you donate to the fund, however, uh, just know that more than half of your money actually goes back to pay his campaign debt. So that's in the small print at the very bottom. I thought that was so eye-opening to me because when you go to Biden and you see where your money goes, what a difference. What a difference. So basically any money you're giving to Donald Trump right now is really just to pay off his debt, surprise, surprise, uh, that he had from the campaign. So it's not for the defense fund. Okay. It's not for these lawyers in campaign because these cases have no, you know, really look at the news, really read from law professors and scholars. Okay. People that are, are, are bipartisan or nonpartisan. OK, don't look at Republican or Democrat lawyers that are saying this stuff. Look for these, you know, nerdy, you know, uh, tenured professors at these schools that just they're just telling you the facts. OK, look, there is no chance of this. A lot of these all these legal cases are just shots in the wind. Right. They're just something to say that you fought. I get it. I get it. OK, but with that said, please don't send your hard and earn money into that. OK, I'm sure you got better bills to pay. I'm sure you could get your daughter something, your son, your whatever. Go buy a new American flag. Go buy a new round magazine of uh, bullets for your gun, which I support guns. OK, so, yeah, I'm a weird liberal. I support guns. Um, so, yeah, go do that. OK, but don't send money to this defense fund. It's not actually going to that. OK, you're just paying off his Capital One debt, <laughs> if you will. So. What's in your wallet, right? Keep it there, whatever is in there. Um, all right. So, you know, look, I, I hope this was a good episode. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sorry it got a little testy. Definitely one of the most, definitely the testiest uh, podcasts we've ever had. I got to have conversations. I never had anyone just duck out. I have, and I'm, we've had tons of tough conversations on here, right? Never had anyone duck out like that. Um, usually a sign of what? 
What's that usually a sign of when someone leaves a conversation with you? They get upset and walk away. What does that usually say? They're wrong, right? And they know it and they're just upset. Don't know how to defend it. So that's what happened. Anyway, all right. Make sure to check out our podcast. Check out the last episodes. Uh, and if you're looking for other episodes where, you know, I talk to somebody with differing opinions. Oof, let's see here. So many. Connie Burden, uh, Pete Sessions, Max Licato, um, Mark Davis. Uh, go down the line. So, and all those people, what would they tell you about me? They were more than happy to come back on and talk to me. Why? I'm fair. And that's all I wanted Jennifer to be was fair. And she wasn't being fair. So can't have those kind of conversations. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Love you guys so much. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. Uh, we are renewed for season three. So you will be seeing us in 2021. Go ahead and celebrate. And uh, coincidentally, today is my birthday. So <laughs> today is my birthday. That's the conversation uh, I get to have on my birthday. So yeah, turn 41 years old. Uh, it's Monday, November 9th. This episode will come out, I think, Thursday. And uh, yeah, so happy birthday to me. And um, yeah, happy birthday to me. So, uh, hey, look, if you want to send me birthday wishes, right? Patrick at Texas Real Food, send me an email. Wish me happy birthday. That'd be cool. Or leave a comment or something. Or subscribe. There you go. That's my birthday wish. Go on Apple Music. Leave us a review. Do something for the podcast today. There you go. That's my birthday uh, wish Wish to everybody listening. Just do, do something for the podcast. Tell a friend about it. Comment, like, subscribe, something, you know, follow. Do something uh, for it. Share an episode you liked online. Just a random episode. That'd be cool, too. So that, that's how you can help me out. Um, or donate, right, to your favorite charity in my name. Nah, not even in my name. You don't have to do that. Pick a charity you like and, and donate to that. Uh, that would be great as well. So... Again, thank you so much for supporting us. Um, hope I'm doing the best I can for you all as a listener. I hope this episode shows you that I care about what y'all take in, the information y'all take in. So thank you so much. Love you guys. Hasta luego. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Mm -hmm.